This is Twit. You know, we, we talk about Black Hat and DEF CON. It's worth reminding people that these are two separate events. They are produced by different companies. They were started by the same person, but have since become uh, two separate entities. They just happen to take place in the same city, one right on the heels of another. And I'd be lying if I said there wasn't a significant overlap in the attendee base. So what was it this year? Well, as always, Black Hat is the more enterprise-facing show. It is where the enterprise defenders spend time. Uh, it is where people whose job it is to keep the bad guys out go to find out what their peers are doing. A lot of researchers. And it was interesting this year hearing attendees say that Black Hat is a very technical, hands-on kind of conference. And, and that's very true. While there are a lot of CISOs there, most of the uh, presentations, most of the trainings, most of the um, sessions that look at research are from and for people who actually get their dirt, hands dirty in cybersecurity. Well, what were they talking about? It will surprise absolutely no one to hear that this year, the biggest single topic of conversation was generative AI. Um, and the remarkable thing about AI is this. Last year, when we went to Black Hat, I heard several executives and CISOs say something a lot like, I never want to hear AI again. I'm sick of hearing about AI. There's nothing new. Everybody's got it. I just don't want to hear about it because it's just plain marketing speak. Fast forward a year, and everybody wants to talk about AI. All of the vendors are talking about either what they're doing in generative AI, what their plans are for generative AI, AI or what the reason is that they're going to wait a while before coming out with something in generative AI. It was the center of gravity around which all conversations um, orbited. I even have a colleague who at RSA invented a metric, um, MTTA, mean time to AI, which was a measure of how long we went in an interview before the first person brought up AI. And I think the average was something like 68 seconds this year. It was really, really short. What, what does it mean for security? Well, it's important to note that generative AI is different than the neural networks and other forms of, let's call it classic AI, that has been part of cybersecurity for a while. The big difference is this. The classic model AI, neural nets and the like, are very good at doing targeted tasks very quickly. They are very good at automating processes. If you want something that will respond to poorly understood threats in a very short period of time, something that uses heuristics, another AI-generated term or AI-adjacent term, um, you're talking... AI, automation, speed, that sort of thing. Generative AI or large language model is really bad at that because the large model requires time to sort through. It requires time to process. It requires time to do the sort of massive correlations that are required to get answers. Where the large language models 
are being used is in human assist functions, mostly to do what I describe as taking a tier one analyst and turning them into a tier 1.5 analyst. It makes it so that as they pass things on to tier two and tier three analysts, it goes with more context, with more recommendations, with more certainty about what is being seen. So we have those two things going back and forth. Now, when we got to DEF CON, things shifted because DEF CON is traditionally the conference for the pen tester, the red team, the threat actor. And such was the case this year. But as we continue a trend that started several years ago, the executive branch of the federal government has recognized just how skilled many of these folks who go to DEF CON are. And so this year, for example, we had a mass generative AI red teaming event. They would get around 200 people at a time into a room filled with bright, shiny new laptops and individual codes that allowed people to record what they were doing as they threw prompts, as they threw lines of text, as they threw ersatz commands against the generative AI engines from Google, from uh, the for, for chat GPT, for all of the major generative AI engines. And this was sponsored by the White House. Um, it, it was fascinating. It was one of the, a surreal moment when I was standing there. I, I attend DEF CON on a media badge. And I was standing there in this room watching all of the people hard at work. Standing next to me was the Secretary of Homeland Security. And on the other side of me were a couple of people from DARPA. Wandering around the room, there were people from the White House staff who were wearing big, round, glowy badges with the White House engraved on. You know, there, there's no trying to pass as anything, but we're here from the White House. Um, but, you know, there were people from um, the Department of State talking about uh, bounty programs against hackers. There were people from DARPA. There were people from all over there. So that was going on. And, oh, by the way, just like AI had been something we didn't talk about at Black Hat last year, at DEF CON, the AI village last year was very sleepy. It shared a room with two other villages. And the biggest conference session I saw had about 20 people sitting in it. This year, you would have thought they were handing out free Taylor Swift tickets. Um, oh, you know, judging by the crowd, there were literally hundreds of people standing in line to get into every session that was held in the AI village. So, what, beside from AI, what were people talking about? People talked about risk. We heard about risk based this, that, and the other. And, and typically, what this means is that companies are using a risk metric. So they're quantifying the risk, taking risk, measuring it, and expressing it in some sort of quantity. And then using whatever product it is they're selling or service to reduce that risk by a quantifiable amount. So that's what their goal, their metric. They're not really worried about 
stopping people, stopping attackers. Stopping attackers is a means to an end. The end is reducing risk. They are risk-based. Going along with that, tools for measuring risk are all over the place. If, they, if we have a problem, to be honest, it's that we have so very many ways of expressing risk, and it's very difficult for companies to compare their risk against that of another, <clears throat> pardon me, organization, <clears throat> which makes it very difficult to benchmark your risk against someone else. So risk, so AI, we talked about things like IOT security or the, the current expression that's being used more and more is OT. Instead of Internet of Things, we're talking about operational technology, OT versus IT, operational technology versus information technology, and how the vast amounts of data that are generated in those OT sensors and controllers can be analyzed and understood by the IT group and some sort of coherent enterprise-wide risk posture arrived at. There is, of course, a lot else, but these were the major th threads that I came across. It was exciting. The energy at both shows was incredible. A um, lot of people talking about how happy they were to be there with all of the attendees, sharing ideas, seeing people face to face, and making the online interactions that will occur the rest of the year much more valuable because they've had the human interaction at the trade show. So, Curtis, before before we close off, I want to I want to really know what 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 was the most Interesting, maybe your favorite part of a black hat, other than running into the, our very own digital Jesuit Padre SJ. What, what, what it was the what was what kind of hit your fancy there? Um, I have to say that my favorite thing, uh, aside from, I, I have to give a you know blatant plug. The Omnia Analyst Summit was great. We were sold out. It was standing room only, and we got to talk to a lot of people there. Um. My favorite thing going through was hitting the startup section and looking at what these small startup companies are doing, often attacking a very particular piece of the puzzle, uh, but doing it with an incredible focus. Now, they were still, we saw a lot of people using AI which I think speaks to the democratization of AI that comes from being able to make use of um, some of the big, you know, the chat GPT, the, the Google, the um, various other public AI engines. Um, and the way that they were bringing various forms of OT under the IT umbrella. Uh, lots of that going on as well. So lots of risk-based, lots of um, artificial intelligence and lurking around all of it was training. I mean, we're still at, sitting on a shortage of somewhere around half a million trained professionals globally. Um, we know there's no way to bridge that gap anytime soon, but the need is out there. And so when I talk to young people about, you know, well, what kind of career should I think about in computers? Look at security. Um, there's a crying need. Uh, it's really interesting. The people are great. And oh, by the way, pays pretty darn well. It does indeed. It does indeed. Well, thank you, Chris. Great, great summary. I'm actually interested to see where all of this goes in the coming months, just to see how organizations actually react to some of the news that came out of it. So appreciate the summary. 
Yeah, you know, it's fun. My it's, pleasure. You know, it's nice that the White House is doing stuff because back in when I first went to DEF CON, the top game was spot the Fed, and I didn't get I didn't get spotted till like the last day. Yeah, the uh, big glowy badges take a lot of challenge out of yeah. that one. <laughs> yeah, I just want to add a little bit because um, being you know an act coming from academia, um, to the kids that are listening or people thinking about getting into cybersecurity, just a heads up, there's no shortcuts. Um, cybersecurity requires almost to the you know letter that you know the systems well. So um, I know, you know, I've been getting a lot of people asking about, you know, what, what career should I go into? Cybersecurity, I, I keep telling them, is a super set of the computer industry because a lot of the vulnerabilities are in pieces of the industry um, that you have to know reasonably well. And the black hat teams and the white hat teams know that. So it's not a shortcut. Do your homework, um, learn about things. Remember this industry, you never stop learning. It's midweek, and you really want to know even more about the world of technology. So you should check out Tech News Weekly, the show where we talk to and about the people making and breaking the tech news. It's the biggest news. We talk with the uh, people writing the stories that you're probably reading. We also talk between ourselves about the stories that are getting us even more excited about tech news this week. So if you're excited, well, then join us. Head to twit.tv slash TNW to subscribe. Subscribe.